Chapter 28 I know it's nine o'clock, I told Mom and Dad, but it's not a school night. Tomorrow is Saturday. Sasha, it's a little late, Dad started. I know, but I'm just going to run to the coals and then hurry right back. I'll be home in half an hour. I promise. The exchange glances. Okay, but bring your phone, Mom said. Calls if he wants to come pick you up. Mom, Nicole's only three blocks away. What could happen? I said. Yes. What could happen? What was happening? Why didn't Nicole say she was afraid? I ran all the way to her house. It was a dark, moonless night. The air was wet, heavy, and wet, as if we were about to start rain again. And strong gusts of wind whistled and howled through the trees, making the branches creak and groan. I was trying to straighten my wind-blown hair when Mrs. Hilliard opened the front door to their house. She blinked in surprise. Sasha, Nicole didn't tell me you were coming. Sparky, Nicole's little white dog, came hurrying to the front door, yapping excitedly. He jumped on me, front paws reaching my knees, short, stubby tail wagging like crazy. Sparky and I are pals. I picked him up and hugged him. Nicole's mom stepped aside so I could walk in. Their house was always warm and always smelled of coffee. I think Nicole's parents drank it all day long. Sparky licked my face. I sat him down and he scampered away. I came to talk about the TV cooking show, I told her. I never lie. It seemed to be a big night for lies. That's so exciting! You and Nicole on TV, she said smiling. Well, yes, I replied. I just wish... Nicole strode into the room before I could finish my sentence. Hi, Sasha. Thanks for hurrying over. Nicole says you're having a little bad luck on the show, Mrs. Hilliard said. But you're still in it, right? You can still win? I nodded. Still in it. Nicole stepped between me and her mother. Sasha and I have to talk, Mom. It's important. Mrs. Hilliard's mouth dropped open. Well, excuse me. She pretended to be insulted. Nice to see you, Sasha. Good luck tomorrow. Then she turned and walked toward the back of the house. What is it? I whispered to Nicole. Why are you scared? Nicole waited till her mom was completely gone. We did the wrong thing, she whispered. I dropped down the ottoman in front of the brown leather armchair. Huh? What are you talking about? Nicole sat on the edge of the couch across from me and leaned closer so she could whisper. We shouldn't have left the monster blood in the TV studio, she said. She glanced behind her to make sure her mother hadn't returned. What if it grows and grows and oozes out of the tote bag? I already told you, I started, but she interrupted, her eyes wide with fear. That tote bag has my name on it. If the monster blood gets out and destroys the studio and does horrible damage, don't know who to blame. But, Nicole, I said, the tote bag is close up tight, and look what time it is. Almost ten o'clock. There won't be anyone there to let us in. We have to try, Nicole said, clasping her hands tensely in front of her. We have to get the monster blood back. I... I won't be able to sleep unless we do, Sasha. I stood up. I could see she was seriously frightened. All kinds of thoughts spun around in my mind. I glanced out the window. Such a dark night, and so late. Nicole, the studio will be locked up tight, I said. There's no way we'll get in. We have to try, she said. We'll find a way, Sasha. But I started to argue with her some more, but I could see she would not give up. Okay, let's see if we go, I said, and somehow we get into the studio. Then what? What do we do with the stuff once we get it? Nicole shrugged. I don't know. Dump it in a trash can, I guess. She stood up across from me, her eyes locked on mine. I only know I won't be able to sleep at all until I know the monster blood's out of the TV studio. I stared back at her for a long moment. Okay, I said. Let's go.